Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use MySQL. Now, this tutorial is specifically for beginners, those of you who have never been exposed to databases before. So we will be going through some of the most basic fundamental concepts, such as creating a database, creating a table, adding data to that table, updating the data, deleting the data, all that good stuff. So if that's something you wanna learn how to do with a very basic example, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. Okay, I'm going to be using an Ubuntu operating system. That's what you're looking at here, a terminal window. Uh, and I do not have MySQL installed at this point. Uh, you might have it installed, but if not, this is how you're going to go ahead and get that on an Ubuntu operating system. So you're going to type in apt get install MySQL server. Hit enter, and that's about 259 megabytes of package space. So we will hit why for yes, do you want to continue, hit enter, and that'll go ahead and do its thing. All right, now that we have MySQL installed, we can go ahead and enter into the MySQL command prompt simply by typing MySQL in the terminal window. So go ahead and do that and hit enter. And now you'll see that from this point forward, we know we're in the MySQL command prompt because everything will be prefixed by MySQL and then this uh, greater than sign. Okay, so that means we can execute MySQL commands. So the first thing we wanna do is to just poke around and see what is in here. So we can see what kind of databases come pre-installed in MySQL by typing show databases. And every command that you execute in this terminal uh, command prompt, you wanna end with a semicolon. So show databases, semicolon, hit enter. And by default, there are four databases. Uh, we don't really have to worry about any of these. These are come, some of the behind the scenes databases. We'll actually create our own database. And we can do that with the create database command. So it's gonna be create database and then the name of the database that you wanna create. So I'm gonna call mine Tony's DB, Tony's database. As always, end with a semicolon, hit enter. Okay, so that said one row affect it. Now, if we go back, uh, if you're on, if you're doing something similar to me on Ubuntu, you can use the up arrow key to go to your previous commands. So if I do that twice, I can execute the show databases command again. And now we will see that we have five databases, one of which is the database that we just created. So that's cool. Let's add a table to that database. A table is going to be, I like to think about it like, a spreadsheet like in Excel or Google Sheets, right? So a bunch of uh, rows, which are equivalent to records of data and columns with information in each column. So that's what a table essentially is in the world of MySQL or specifically SQL. So let's go ahead and create a table. Um, what we're gonna do is to first make sure we tell MySQL that we wanna create the table associated with Tony's database. So we can do that by telling MySQL to use, from this point forward, Tony's DB, okay? So everything relative, any command that we execute now will be relative to Tony's database. Okay, and before we create a table, let's see what type of tables we have. Show tables. There are no tables, it's an empty set. So let's take care of that. Let's create a table. So we're gonna type in create table. As you can tell, this is more like what you, what you think you want to like execute, you can pretty much type in words. So create table, right? Uh, we're going to name the table contact. Okay. So this tutorial is going to be creating uh, a table to hold our personal contacts. Okay. So we're going to open and close um, uh, these brackets and put our semicolon in everything that we want to create, like the content of the table, the definition of the table, we're going to put between these two parentheses. So the first column that we're gonna create is gonna be an ID column. And now this could be named whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine ID. This is the name of the column. And now the type of the column that we're gonna make is an integer. Okay, an integer is one, two, three, four, five, just a number, a whole number. We're gonna qualify it by saying not null. It cannot be, it has to have a value. Not null means it has to have a value. And then this other qualifier, auto increment and primary key. These, these two, don't worry about these too much. Basically, this means that every new row we're going to add is going to go from uh, an integer starting at one 
and then going the next row is going to have a number two the next row is going to have a number three so it's auto incrementing that integer every new record that we add to the database and then primary key just uh, again qualifies it as uh, basically like the unique identifier for that row so it's the primary key for that row so that's one column in our contact table okay we can make another column with comma and then write the definition for that column so this next column we're going to be this is a contact list right so we're going to keep track of the names of our contacts so i'm going to call the contact the column name okay and in this case it's going to be uh, not a number we're going to do text okay so the way you do text in a mysql database is with var char so that stands for variable number of characters, okay? And uh, I'm gonna make this of size 50. So we can have somebody's name up to 50 characters in length. And you can make that 55, 75, 100, whatever you wanna make it, okay? And then we're gonna do the next column. Actually, we wanna qualify that also with not null. We have to know the name of the person in order to have a contact uh, record for them. Um, let's add a phone column. And we'll do the same type of thing, var, car. Uh, we'll make that 50 as well. Uh, actually, no, phone numbers, those are like 10 digits. So at most, it could be 10 digits. We might not know the contacts, phone number, so we will not say not null. This can be null. This can have an empty space. Um, and then we can do email. Let's do var, car. 50 and then one more column will do age and that will be an integer so how old is somebody okay so let's go ahead and execute that we're creating a table called contact with an id column a name column a phone column and an email column and an age column so hit enter cool so that created that table if we do show tables again we will have our contact table inside of Tony's database. And we could do describe, D-E-S-C-R-I, describe contact. And that's gonna pretty much tell us the definition that we just created, told it, right? So uh, there's an ID column, a name column, a phone column, an email column, and an age column. These are the types of those columns. Are nulls allowed? No for the first two, yes for the next three. This is a primary key. Uh, the defaults are all null and the extra qualifier auto increment only for the ID column. Okay, now if we want to see the data in this table, which at this point, as you already know, is empty, uh, we can do select star S E L E C T star from contact. Okay, and like you predict it, nothing happens because we didn't add any data to it yet. It's an empty set. So let's insert some data into our table. We could do that with insert into contact, insert into the name of the table that you wanna insert into. And now you wanna pretty much at this point tell the, or in the command, show what columns you wanna insert into. So we wanna insert a name, a phone number, an email, and an age, okay? So insert into the contact table, these into these four columns the values that we wanna add are going to be, I'm gonna say Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Okay, that's our name. Our phone number is, uh, I don't know, 206-555-1234. Oops, okay. And then our email is going to be jeff at amazon.com. And our age is going to be, how old is Jeff Bezos? I think 57. Okay, so basically insert into con contact the name, Jeff Bezos, the phone number, 206-555-1234, the email, jeff at amazon.com, and the age, 57. Okay, so hit enter. That says queer, okay, one row affected. So now hit up couple times select star from contact now we have our first record in our database so Jeff Bezos has been assigned an ID of one based on that auto increment logic that we created here's his phone number here's his email and here's his age 
Now we can do that as many times as we want. We can do insert into contact. Let's say we have somebody else. We want to insert uh, Bill Gates, but we don't know we don't know Bill's phone number or email. We only know how old he is. He's 65 years old. So instead of saying all the columns at in this case, we would just say we want to insert somebody's name and somebody's age, not their phone and their email. And then for value, we can do. Uh, I think, guess you can do either value or values. Um, I know we did value up here, but I think the proper way is values. That was my mistake, but it still worked. Uh, so the values will be Bill Gates and his age would be 65. So these are all again, relative name, Bill Gates, age 65. Enter, query okay, one row affect it. So hit the up arrow key a couple times, select star from contact. Now we have two contacts in our database. We have Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. Uh, Bill Gates, as you would have guessed, his ID is going to be two because we're auto incrementing one, two. Next will be three. And his age is 65. We don't know his phone number. We don't know his email. Okay, let's add another contact. This time it will be, we don't know any information about them except their name. So we're gonna just do insert into contact just the name values. This is going to be Elon Musk. Okay, so you guys, I think you guys can understand the pattern at this point. One row affected, hit up a couple times, select star from contact. Now we have three contacts in our database. But let's say we just figured out what Elon Musk's age is. You know, he is 50 years old. So if we wanna change the data that we already uh, add it to the database, we can use the update command. Okay, so update, update, contact, update the ta table that you want to update, set age equal to 50, where name equals Elon Musk. Okay, so what does this say? We're working with the contact table, we want to update it, and for any row that the name is Elon Musk, we want to set the age column to 50. Okay, so right now, this is the only row that matches that criteria. Right now, his age is null, and we want to set this specific cell right here because it matches that criteria to 50. So let's go ahead and execute that. It says rows match one, changed one, warning zero select star from contact. Now Elon Musk has an age. He's 50 years old. Okay, let's, uh, I think we got uh, Bill Gates's age wrong. Let's just say he's not 65 or, or maybe let's say he turned from 65 to 66. This isn't the best way to store data in a database. You probably want to store his birth date instead of his age, but this again is just a basic tutorial. So let's do something similar. Update, contact, set age equals 66 where now we can do name equals bill gates but if this is a very large database there's probably more than one bill gates in the world and the best way to you know only know that you're working with this particular bill gates is to use his id because this is a unique column right so instead of saying where name equals bill gates a better way to do this a more proper way to do this would be where ID equals two. And that's again, just in case we have multiple Bill Gates in our table. So where ID equals two will 100% only change the age for this row. So let's go ahead and do that. So before Bill Gates was 65. Now when we look at the database, it should say Bill Gates is 66 and that's exactly what it does here. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, I wanna show you a couple more things about filtering with the database. And when I say filtering, I just mean, um, instead of saying select star, we can choose what type of data we show in our output uh, by adding some filters. Okay, so let's say we just, instead of showing all these columns, let's just say we wanna see the name column and the age column. So just the name and the age from contact. Okay, so now instead of showing the phone in the email column and the ID column, we're down, we're not 
let's just use the word down selecting from uh, five columns just to those two explicit columns. And you know, before we had the star here, we're just explicitly saying name and age. Now we can further filter our rows by saying select name and age from contact where let's say age is greater than 55. So what do you expect to show up at this point? So select the name and the age from the contact table where age is 55, above 55, greater than 55. So Jeff is above 55, he's 57. Bill Gates is above 55, he's 66. Elon Musk is only 50 years old. So I would expect to see these two rows show up and more specifically, because we're saying only we will only want to see the name and age column, we should only see this show up, pretty much everything I have highlighted. So let's see if that's the case. And it is. So name and age, Jeff Bezos, 57, Bill Gates, 66. And that works the same way. Where age is less than 55, we should only see Elon Musk show up. And let's say where age equals 55, Nobody in the table is 55 years old, uh, but if we do like if where age is 50 years old, then Elon Musk shows up as we would uh, have expected. Okay, so one last thing I wanna show you is how to delete data from the database. So this is what we have right now. We're gonna use the same concept that we did uh, by specifying uh, deletion based on a row uh, ID. So. Let's say we want to delete Bill Gates from our database. We would say, and you might have already uh, thought about what this would look like at this point, but similar structure, delete from contact, delete from the contact table where ID equals two. Now, again, this could be where name equals Bill Gates, or this could be delete from contact where age equals 50. But I'm gonna just say for this example, delete from contact where ID equals two. So hit enter. And now if we select everything from the contact table, we'll see that he's gone. Bill Gates is not in our contact list anymore. And just to show you that that this works, um, I'll do delete from contact where age equals 50. Or you know, we can even do where age is greater than 50. So that would, in this case, that would delete Jeff Bezos because he matches the criteria where his age is greater than 50. So if we execute this, then the only thing left in our contact database should be Elon Musk. And let me see what happened here. Delete, delect, I said delect, D-E-L-E-T-E. -E -E. Delete from contact where age is greater than 50. That's gonna go ahead and drop Jeff Bezos off of our contact list. And let's see what it looks like. We only have Elon Musk left over. Now guys, if you wanna learn how to use your data in your database, your MySQL database in PHP, I invite you to check out this video right here. And thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.